Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would do something we haven't done in quite a long time, and that's have a look at a user mission. And this one is for the TU-22, the supersonic bomber for the USSR. This was made by Polaska001, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. There are some actually really cool features on this thing. First of all, um, it has uh, some landing gear, which you can actually move independently from the aircraft on the front one, so you can actually steer it, um, which is uh, not present, I don't think, in War Thunder, at least in a huge way yet, but I'm sure it will be at some point. The other thing as well is it has access to an AGM, which has the old uh, mechanics when it comes to uh, AGMs when they were first introduced with stuff like the bullpup, where you could uh, fire it and then follow the AGM as you go along, which is pretty cool. And also the vehicle does represent something that we haven't seen too much in War Thunder, which of course is the idea of supersonic bombers in very large ways. The Tu-22 is a very interesting aircraft and there's actually a pretty cool history about it. So what I'm gonna do for you is read through it and then also leave you some links to go read about it uh, if you don't know about this machine. So the TU-22 Blinder, as it was known, had a similar performance or roughly a similar performance to the B-58 Hustler. It was capable of a supersonic dash and cruises at high subsonic speeds, and at least three major variants of the TU-22 entered operational service for the Soviet Air Forces, a free-fall bomber variant, an ASM carrier variant, and a photo-electronic reconnaissance variant. Obviously, in the mission, we have the ASM carrier variant, um, which is, um, I believe, the TU-22K variant. So the development of the supersonic uh, TU-22 bomber began after the start of the production of the TU-16. During preliminary studies, OKB Tupolev considered three versions, a supersonic attack bomber, a long-range supersonic bomber, and also an intercontinental supersonic bomber. These were all given numbers, including 98, 105, and 108, respectively. The first two required swept wings, while the 108 bomber, which was the intercontinental supersonic bomber, had triangular wings. And in the end, the 105 design served as the basis for the Tu-22, which was the long-range supersonic bomber design, and the 98, which was the supersonic attack bomber, was applied to the long-range fighter plane, the Tu-128. The 108 design was completely dropped, and the original design drew heavily on the Tu-16 and provided for four BD-5 or BD-7 turbojet engines. The angle of the swept, wing, uh, swept back wings was increased up to 45 degrees. The project was finally approved by the Soviet government in August of 1954, despite numerous objections within the Communist Party leadership. This supersonic medium-range bomber is a swept-wing aircraft with two engines positioned as the base, uh, at the base of the tail fin. The low-mounted swept-wing uh, wings are tapered with square tips and a wide wing root. The landing gear pods extended beyond the wings' trailing edges and two jet turbojet engines were uh, low-mounted on the tail fin itself uh, with round intakes on them. This eliminated the need for a complicated boundary layer separation system in the intakes, but added a 15% weight penalty and made engine maintenance much more difficult because of how they were off the ground. The fuselage uh, was also tube-shaped with a solid pointed nose and a stepped cockpit. Tail flats are low-mounted on the uh, fuselage, swept back and tapered with square tips with the fin being swept back and tapered with a square tip too. The prototype of the 105 aircraft used the BD-7M engines, made its first flight on the 21st of June, 1958, but was subsequently extensively modified and upgraded. The Russians apparently had engine development problems early in the Tu-22 program, and the prototypes were fitted with interim engines. In April of 1958, even before the first flight, the decision was made to equip the aircraft with the more powerful HK-6 engines and to build a second prototype with BD-7M engines. As the development of the HK-6 engines were delayed, only the second prototype was actually built, which carried out its first flight 
on September of 1959. During testing, numerous problems arose and a number of crewmen were lost in crashes. Series productions of this aircraft, which was designated the Tu-22, started at the plant NR-2 in Kazan in 1959, where more than 300 of the bombers were built through to 1969. It entered operational service in 1962, and by 1970, there were 180 Tu-22 aircraft in LRA service. And from 1965 on, all Tu-22 aircraft were equipped with an air refueling system, consisting of a refueling probe which folds into the fuselage when not in use. And beginning in 1965, the Tu-22 fleet was re-equipped with more powerful RD-7M2 engines which allowed an increase in the maximum speed of up to 16, uh, 1,600 kilometers an hour. So you had the Tu-22B, uh, which was primarily employed as a medium bomber dropping freefall bombs. All of the 1022B bombers were mainly used for training purposes, and the aircraft also could be modified to serve as a tanker. Then you had the Tu-22K, this was the one which uh, was equipped with the KH-22, uh, the 250 um, uh, long-range uh, air-to-surface missile, um, and uh, it could also carry free four bombs. Uh, it carried out its first tests in 1961 and deployed uh, in 1967 after conclusions of the testing phase. Then there was also a maritime reconnaissance aircraft, which is the Tu-22P, um, which was equipped with an air refueling system and received the designation the Tu-22PD. Uh, then you have the Tu-22U, which was a trainer version uh, similar to the Tu-22A uh, or B, um, I should say, um, and uh, it was basically just used. Uh, the only difference is that the student itself, who was training, would have a slightly raised cockpit. And then you had the Tu-22 RDM. This was an upgrade into the 1980s, uh, which uh, was a reconnaissance aircraft overall, so one of the last um, uses of the vehicle. The Tu-22 bombers were intended to replace the Tu-16s, but due to its poor performance, it was deemed un unsatisfactory. Carrying a similar payload, only on a slightly greater range, the Tu-22 offered no real increase in capability. Its limited range was its main disadvantage, though the Tu-22K only carried one missile, whereas the Tu-16 carried up to three. Unreliable and also prone to uh, accidents and incidents, the Tu-22 was not built in sufficient numbers to replace the aging Tu-16 badgers, which remained in service well into the 1970s. Subsequently, Tupolev sought to upgrade the Tu-22 in the form of a new design, which was designated 106, that was supposed to have a range of 6,700 kilometers, a speed of 2,000 kilometers an hour, on the new HK-6 engines. This effort eventually led to the development of the Tu-22M. The Tu-22 was also used by the Soviet Union in the Afghanistan war, and served the Soviet Air Force and Navy into the late 1980s. Iraq received about 12 of them in 1973, and Libya received 12 to 18 from 77 to 83, and they were used during the Iran-Iraq war, and also by Libya during the conflicts in the Sudan, and also Chad. And a number of um, them from each nation was lost to SAMs of the opposing nations, and as of 2000, Ukraine actually remains the sole operator of the type, with the Libyan and Iraqi aircraft thought to be unserviceable. So this is technically, or at least was in 2000, still in service as a vehicle. And when it comes to War Thunder itself, what we can see from it is it's an idea that a lot of people have talked about and asked about for a long time, which has actually been explored into with already one of these Soviet supersonic bombers. One of the main issues with the Tu-22B, though, is the, uh, is the loadout that it could carry, especially when it comes to this bomb. Basically, it could carry bombs from 250 kilos, but up to 9,000 kilos, or even nuclear bombs. Uh, even the 22K could also carry the H-22 missile on it, and then obviously it has the turret in the back to try and keep it safe. This thing uh, could be one of those vehicles that breaks the game, 
It could also be one of those vehicles that doesn't do anything um, because of its interception um, chance. But we'll have to see when they start adding in these absolutely massive machines, which I think will come. Stuff like the B-58, the B-52, the TU-16, um, the TU-22. All of these machines now, at least in my head, are on the table when it comes to War Thunder, especially with some of the changes that they've done recently to try and accommodate them, such as the EC maps and realistic. Anyway, as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, BRFC15, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Eugens Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, and then Carl Kinn, Barine, Lafouche, and also Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.